your ATT stuff today? My, my ATT. Well, you defended it. Yeah, there's, you know, you try to give both sides. Try to give both sides. There is a possible. Listen, Comcast and Charter went down this week in part because there is a belief that AT&T will become a more nimble, flexible competitor and have a capital structure that will allow it to do so. That's why they went down. I mean, they went down for us. Maybe Char uh, Comcast for went down for other reasons because people are worried Brian's going to do something, which I don't believe he will. But why do you, you always use the first stupid. names for moguls? Brian Roberts. Okay, thank you. You work for Brian. The, uh, the chairman, CEO, the right. man. No, I, I, I know that. I'm just saying that one of the things that I don't like about this industry is it's everyone first needs scale. Yeah. And then everyone is... You don't like that everybody uses their no, first name. No, I don't like everyone needs scale, and everyone just plays Barry. Okay? <laughs> Barry. But we know who on. Barry is. Now, we don't know who Bob is anymore, because it could be Chapek Yeah. Yeah. You know. Now, we heard some interesting things about what uh, Barry Diller said about Chapek disenfranchising Bob Iger. But then again, Bob Iger's not the CEO anymore. No, Bob Iger is the chairman, and he is leaving the company as, uh, at the end of the year. Going on to do, I'm sure, more some very interesting things. Unclear as to what those will be, but yeah, this is Bob Chapek's Disney now. Right, right. I mean, Bob Iger built it into what it is today, largely, by the way, through successful acquisitions. Well, David, let now, me the ask Fox you something. Deal, many people would say they overpaid for. I don't want to get into an argument with him about it right now, but the, you know, they paid a lot there. That said. Direct to consumer was everything. But and the pivot that they but, did there was incredible. We, you'll never, we'll never forget that August day. Six, I don't remember when it was, when the ESPN numbers and suddenly everybody was like, "What's going to happen?" And then right. they made it happen. They put it up years there, later for 100 million yep. subs, and that was it. But David, I want to talk about something that has been bothering me about Disney. Okay, Disney Plus is now the same place that ESPN was. In other words, if D Disney Plus numbers don't come out great then the stock goes down. The oh, stock's right. punished. It's what, it's what the stock trades. And that's ridiculous. Point. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. There are many different levers of Disney, and they're all coming back. Right. And to key on just Disney Plus is to ignore the, the lucrative nature of the theme parks, uh, is to ignore what I regard as being uh, entertainment that people will pay for. I'm not saying that movies will come back, but I am saying that if anybody can start doing a lot of uh, of production, mm -hmm. it's going to be them. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it, to judge Disney just on that is to have people who watch our show sell it. And that we don't want because it's a very good franchise, much better than the stock right now is indicating because it's just hanging entirely on Disney+. Plus. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.